well, warm welcome and a good day to all of you. Uh, we are in the systems engineering course on the MOOCs and I am Dr. Deepa Philip from IIT Kanpur. And what we are talking, going to talk today is dig more deeper into the systems engineering life cycle stages and also compare and contrast different systems engineering process models that are available. With that, so today's lecture is the systems engineering life cycle stages, though we will also be looking at different process models towards the end of this lecture. And uh, we already seen the previous uh, stuff about the life cycle and different type of life cycle models available. And we saw that almost all basic models of the basic uh, stages and phases within it, stages, phases, they call it in different uh, names, nomenclature is used. So we will see how uh, all these things, different uh, basic structure uh, applies to different models. So the life cycle stages as we seen earlier uh, is there are three, generally three stages or there are three stages to system life cycle. Okay. And the two of these are the development stages and one is called as the application stage or sometimes also known as the post development stage. So, in this case the system, the system is getting developed, here the system is getting deployed or used. So, that is why we basically say that these are the developmental stages of the system and this is the application or the post development stage or the deployment stage of the system. So, most of the models will have these three general stages and the stage, the first stage is usually called as a concept stage and the concept stage we can define it as the, uh, it is the initial stage, initial stage of uh, system formulation and system definition. formulation system definition uh, and system definition uh, that will best satisfy the customer need. Okay. The importance here is that we are talking about the formulation of the system and the definition of the system or system concept definition or you can think about it as system concept definition that will best satisfy the customer need. The important thing about the customer need is that this should be a valid need, there should be some validity behind the need okay. and many there in certain models this stage is also called as system architecturing. Okay. So, when somebody is talking about system architecturing, it is the initial stage of the formulation and the concept definition of the system, where you are trying to satisfy the valid need of a customer. The engineering stage is the second stage, okay, where the, the second stage, this is again a stage of development. So, these two are the development stages. Okay. And the second stage, where the system concept Uh, is translated into a valid physical system design. Physical system design. Again, we are talking about the physical system design here because our work is more, our discussion is mostly about the products that are to be manufactured or systems that are manufactured. We are not talking too much about soft systems or software systems. Uh, so, the physical system designs, uh, what, what design is it? The, that fulfill, uh, that fulfill the requirements uh, of the customer. Uh, within reasonable cost and schedule, reasonable cost and schedule. So, here we are translating the concept 
into a physical system design. So, physical product is being designed and built or engineered, which will fulfill the customer requirements within reasonable costs and schedule. So, uh, nobody will be interested in designing a system which with, with unreasonable cost and unreasonable schedule. So, that is the important uh, aspect of this. And then the third phase of the system, which is the fielding and the or the operation stage or what we call as the application stage or sometimes also known as known as post developmental stage as I said earlier, because it is after the development of the system, the physical development of the system and the post development stage where activities like production, operations, deployment, system support, etcetera all accomplished uh, during uh, useful life of the system. So, what we are basically saying here is that the uh, there are many activities that are associated after the development of the system, you have to produce a system, you have to build in large quantities, you have to operate the system in its operational environment, you have to deploy the system at various areas, various aspects. There, the system also needs support and maintenance and other aspects etcetera. All of these things are accomplished uh, during the useful life of the system. So, here the system is in the what we call as the fielded stage, it is doing what it is supposed to do. What is supposed to do. So, the assistance provided here is also what comes as under the application stage of the system. So, these are the three major stages in almost all systems engineering life cycle stage uh, life cycle models and you will see different variations and uh, permutation combinations of stuff here. So, what we will do is that we will look into detail of these three stages and uh, try to decipher uh, what are the things that constitute these stages and what are the major activities that are part of these stages. So, the concept stage, the first thing that we need to talk about is the concept stage and if you think about a concept stage, it this stage comprises of, comprises of analysis and planning and planning. So, all sort of analysis and planning ok, all sorts uh, required to establish the uh, valid need, valid is important for it, valid need for a new system. system. Um, so, the first and foremost thing is it comprises of all the analysis and planning required to establish the valid need for a new system. Why it does so? The question here is why do the customer need the new system? This is the important question that we get to answer at this point. But is it just the establish planning and analysis to establish the validity of the need? No, there is some more things that is part of this. Here we also try to do is that we also establish uh, the possibility or feasibility of an architecture. An architecture of who? An architecture of the system um, and that is realizable. So, what are we talking about? At this point we are also trying to establish the possibility or feasibility of an architecture. Is it actually possible to design the system uh, and that architecture is it realizable? So, those are the two aspects ok and in the way that all of these things together together satisfy the need 
in the best possible way. Okay. So, the concept stage is it comprises of all analysis and planning all type of analysis and planning required to establish the valid need of the new system or you are answering the question why do the customer need the new system. And also along with that establishing the need you are also establishing the possibility or feasibility of an architecture of this or a possibility of a system architecture that is realizable or that can be realized within a reasonable cost and a schedule with the so that the customer need can be satisfied in the best possible way. So, the uh, first characteristic as we talked about it is the uh, uh, valid need. So, what is a valid need? So, the valid need is so we here is that we are establishing that there is a valid need, there is a valid need yeah. or you can also think about it as a market feasibility. So, if you make the product there will be somebody to buy this okay. uh, and for the new system. So, there is a valid need for the new system that is technically and uh, economically feasible. So, what we are saying here is that you establish the valid need and also establish the technical and economical feasibility of the need. Okay. So, that is the first aspect of the concept stage you are establishing the validity of the need. Then we talk about the system concepts which is the second aspect. So, this, uh, the system concepts here is that you are exploring the establishing was the first part here you are exploring potential system concepts potential system concepts or formulations, system concepts or formulations uh, along with uh, valid sets of system performance requirements. So, here you are exploring multiple concepts, multiple potential system concepts or formulations. Concepts or formulations are uh, they are like as we sent in one of the presentations all of these are black boxes we are not really detailing the circuit diagrams or the interfaces or anything like that, but these are basically the major blocks building blocks of the system and along with the valid system performances. So, uh, so what we are saying here is that the system should be able to meet these performance requirements that is the uh, system concept. So, the exploration is the second aspect of the concept stage. Then third aspect of the concept stage is the selection. So, here is the selection, selection of the most attractive system concept. The attractive term it is not about the beauty or attractiveness or something, it is about the uh, best fit. So, the attractive we can think about it as a best suited kind of a concept. So, the best suited system concept and then define the functional characteristics, define the functional characteristics, characteristics, characteristics of what? Of the attractive system concept. Okay, uh, using which engineering production and operations plans can be made. So, here the best suited system concept. So, here is a selection process from the explored potential system concepts you choose the best suited or the attractive system concept and then define the functional characteristics of the concept in such a way that the engineering production and operations plans can be made using the concept definition the selected concept definition that is just created out of this. 
Then there is another aspect also called as new technology development because certain times, certain times the envis envisaged system, envisaged system will require development of new technology. Why? Because the technology is not existing, because of non-existent technology. Okay. So, non-existent tech is one of the reason. Okay. So, certain times NVSI system develop require new technology, hence develop necessary technology, necessary tech and tech needed for the system concept and validate te the tech. So, you just do not develop the new technology, you also validate the technology as part of this. So, if a new material is necessary, uh, for example, when Rolls Royce designed the trend series of engine, trend 1000 series of engine, they were looking for new materials for the fan blades. And that actually required uh, and they finally choose the material as titanium alloys and it required a new manufacturing or fabrication technology to be developed uh, as part of that process and hence that was developed by Rolls Royce. So, and then they developed it, tested it and proved that the fan blades that are built using the technology, new developed technology is in fact actually better than the existing process. So, these kind of new technology sometimes will be required as part of the system concept. And if it is necessary, then that new technology development also becomes part of the concept stage. So, when you go through all these four aspects of the concept stage, uh, in certain cases you might only go through two, certain, three, certain times you might go through because sometimes you might not require a new technology development. All the necessary technology is available. So, then you will only end up doing the three aspects of it. But anyway, Within these four aspects, with different permutations and combinations of these four aspects, you would be able to come up with a reasonably good concept of the system, which is the output of the system concept stage. Then comes the engineering stage, the uh, second phase after the engineer uh, after the system concept. So, as I said earlier, the aim of it is to engineer the chosen system concept. So, the engineering is actually, and if you think about it, it is actually the development of a physical system, system from where do you develop from or based on the chosen system concept, chosen system concept from the previous stage uh, uh, so that the new system can be produced, you can produce a new system, you can produce a new system, operate and maintain. How do you do produce, operate and maintain? All these things should be done economically and successfully. So, the cost economic aspects, economic viability and as well as the successful aspects of the system is also considered in this case. So, you are the physical uh, chosen system concept from the previous stage, which was more of a analysis plus basic aspects. From here, a physical design, a physical system is designed out of this one. Uh, so, you are creating the physical product that can be produced, operated and maintained. Uh, that is the engineering stage of the, uh, the uh, life cycle model. Also, it should be noted that uh, the aim of systems engineering, systems engineering, we have mentioned this earlier, uh, aims to guide the engineering process. The engineering activities will be, why? Because engineering will be 
done by experts. The engineering is not the job of the systems engineer. Systems engineering job is to guide the engineering process because experts will do the engineering and also to involve in involve in uh, design and management of interfaces, develop test cases then solve discrepancies, solve functional discrepancies, discrepancies etcetera are also aspect of the uh, systems engineering. So, the engineering stage the role of the systems engineering is to guide the engineering process which are conducted by experts in appropriate disciplines. And also the systems engineer in addition to guiding the engineering will also be involved in the design and management of the interfaces. It will also be involved in the development of the test cases and also solve functional discrepancies. So, if we look at it the two main objectives that we talked about it is ok. So, the uh, as he said uh, the chosen system concept get translated to a physical system ok. So, the objectives is engineering of prototype system. So, when we talk about a prototype system the prototype that satisfies or you can use the word fulfill also is fine, fulfill uh, performance, what performance, desired performance or required performance, reliability that is also again required reliability or specified reliability and safety, maintenance etcetera. So, in this case you are talking about not just designing any prototype, the prototype that satisfies or fulfill the performance requirements, the performance requirements, liability requirements, safety requirements, maintenance requirements etcetera. So, here the physical system the choice the choice of components interfaces all those kind of things comes as part of this. And the aim here is to satisfy the requirements and second aspect is engineering for manufacturability. Uh, so, here is also it, this this is a concept because some people different from the design for manufacturing. The aspect here is that ensure or ensuring economic economic production and usage or in a way ensuring affordability by the customer. So, you do not want to create a scenario where you design a physical system which is not affordable by the customer. So, the affordability the economic production and usage is an important aspect of it or in a way in the engineering stage that is why sometimes we call this as the acceptance testing stage. So, whatever the concept is when you translate it into a physical product then it should be acceptable to the customer. So, that part the acceptance to the customer because the customer will only accept it if it is economically feasible to him to produce and use it. Uh, otherwise, customer would say that is not an uh, something that I am not, not interested in because I do not have the financial resources to maintain this. So, that is the second aspect. So, we now seen both of the pre development phase this is where actually by the end of this stage we have a physical system by end of this stage that is the important aspect of this uh, uh, life cycle stage. Then the third part we talk about is the fielding and the operational stage. The fielding and the operational stage this in a broad sense in a simple sense it is all activities that are beyond the system development. So, you are talking about everything that is after the system development. So, what are the major things here? So, the post development stage some people call this as the post development stage 
or some certain model calls this as post development stage has all activities uh, beyond system development, but systems engineering is necessary. Why it is necessary? Because it is necessary in supportive role. There are certain aspects after the development of the system where systems engineering still needs to be involved in the uh, post de development stage of the system during the operational things. The first and foremost thing is systems engineering helps to solve unanticipated problems requiring urgent solutions. So, during fielding or testing or operations unanticipated issues crop up. Then immediate resolution is necessary to continue or to ensure the continued usage of the system. We will discuss this point uh, in little elaboration uh, using an example, a uh, real life example uh, later during this presentation because it is important to stress this aspect because many a times people do think that the fielding and operation stage, the role of the systems engineering is not there, but systems engineering do play a significant or a major role in this process. And also this is a stage at which uh, successful testing and evaluation happens. So, the successful testing and evaluation means testing of the system in its operational environment, environment uh, so that all desired functional capabilities capabilities are demonstrated. So, as we mentioned in the previous slide, the test cases that are developed by the systems engineer uh, comes in handy at this point, where the successful testing and evaluation, the TNE of the system, uh, where the user is uh, taking the prototype, testing it, putting it into different test cases and seeing the performance of the system and getting satisfied that all the functional requirements specified by the user is uh, fulfilled by the designed system or the physical design of the system. Hence that is why it is also called as the acceptance stage by certain people or certain model, uh, certain uh, systems engineering model developers because this is where the customer accepts the physical design physical design that was the translation of the concept of the system concept. Okay. So, uh, we also another aspect of this is we should also think about it is the, the this stage also requires assistance from systems engineering for one important thing which is called as system upgradation. Systems engineering for, uh, for system upgradation. Uh, and also system uh, maintenance replacement. So, in addition to the uh, testing, the acceptance testing of the system, uh, the systems engineering help is also needed for upgradation of the system because some of the things that might when the user uses this, oh well this is really good, uh, but it has taken some time to develop the system because uh, remember we already told that all systems engineering 
projects are usually long projects because of the complexity of the systems involved. We are talking about development of systems of systems or complex systems. So, it is not a one or two year project, it probably be as long as five, eight year long project. So, during that project the technology would have advanced and when the system actually come up, the user feels that okay, this is a new thing that need to be happened. So, the system also, the current system that need to be developed need to be upgraded to suit that. So, that will be one aspect of the systems engineering where the systems engineer will also help. The last and final aspect will also be the supply chain management. The systems engineering or systems engineer help is required in also maintaining the supply chain to ensure that the product fulfills its operational life cycle. So, that is also needed because during the life cycle parts need to be changed, things has to be maintained, all that requires a dedicated supply chain or a smooth functioning supply chain that is required which should also be uh, which is also the responsibility of the systems engineer to design the supply chain and make the user aware of such a supply chain. So, that the user when he use when he, the user use, utilizes the system uh, is, can utilize the supply chain to ensure that the uh, system continues to operate successfully throughout its entire design to life cycle. So, uh, let us talk about an example to discuss about these aspects, the Boeing 787 or what is commonly known as the Dreamliner example. Uh, there is it is a quite a long big example, but what we will try to do it is we will try to take some simple salient points and try to establish uh, the importance of systems engineering and how the systems engineering did actually help after the product was fielded. Uh, so, the main aim, uh, there are many aims, so there are, so these are just, just two representative uh, requirements of 787. Uh, I just took this just to demonstrate things. There are so many multiple many, many, many uh, requirements that were part of the 787 design. But two important things that we talked about here was the weight reduction to improve the fuel efficiency. So, the Boeing really wanted to reduce the weight of the aircraft because uh, if you know if for anybody who is in the aerospace engineering would know that uh, any aircraft that need to fly or that that flies uh, or any body that flies, you know that the thrust should be equal to drag and lift should be equal to weight. So, if the weight reduces then the requirement of the lift also reduces. When the re requirement of the lift reduces then the amount of thrust required to fly also reduces. So, the aim was to actually create an aircraft uh, that has less thrust requirement, but can carry uh, uh, thrust requirement due to its less in of less structural weight. So, that you can get a better fuel efficiency out of it or improved fuel efficiency out of it. And second goal was to increase the passenger comfort or comfort in a such sense that uh, reduce vibrations, reduce noise, etcetera. These were the some of the aspects of the two aspects of the Boeing Dreamliner 787. And there were so many more other more aspects, but we are not talking about that. We are just taking two as an example. So, uh, one thing when they started des designing this and developing this, uh, they found out that the technology is not there to actually develop uh, the airframe using composite materials. So, major innovations through significantly advanced manufacturing technologies were required. So, this is where we talk about the identify new tech that is part of the concept phase. It was figured out that if the aircraft has to be built about 50 percent of the aircraft is to be composite or carbon composite based aircraft for why? For what? Reducing the weight the reduction of weight. This was the option that Boeing took because if you want to reduce the weight then a significant portion of the aircraft need to be built using composites. And if you have to build the aircraft using composite you have to build advanced manufacturing technologies that were not available at that point of time. So, Boeing invested in developing the new um, advanced manufacturing technology to realize uh, an aircraft where approximately 50 percent of the aircraft is composite based. So, uh, this is where then they just did not develop the manufacturing stuff, they developed it, tested it 
and validated it. The new manufacturing process has been developed, tested and validated. So, that was one uh, aspect of how the new technology gets developed as part of the concept phase. But then the Dreamliner came out, it became a big hit, lot of companies ordered, significant amount of large ordering happens because the uh, improved fuel efficiency, efficiency translates to significantly lower operational costs. So, everybody felt that Boeing 787 Dreamliner is going to be a big hit, it is going to revolutionize the entire, uh, the, the way in which aviation sector is going to perform. So, it was, it set up a new benchmark, everything was going great until one point of time the problem that almost everybody, anybody who is to dealt with engineering might have heard about this, the lithium ion battery failure during fielding of the um, 787 Dreamliner. You might have heard about the case of ANA or the Nippon Airlines, all Nippon Airlines, the Japanese Airlines, where the batteries bursted during flight, uh, creating uh, significant, uh, significantly dangerous situation for the passengers. It, so, the lithium ion batteries that were used in the Dreamliner 787 started behaving badly and when multiple aircrafts had the uh, issues, batteries started bursting, then the FAA, the regulatory authority, authority like FAA and all issued warning that the fleet needs to be grounded. So, anybody who was operating the Dreamliner 787. Uh, how to ground the fleet, uh, up to how far until Boeing uh, solves the problem. So, uh, then the Boeing system called upon the systems engineers again to figure out what happened and obviously we know that if you are engineering a complex system like an aircraft, like a Dreamliner, there will be so many numerous interconnecting parts myriads of interconnecting parts and when all these parts are interconnected, there are many parts that are interconnecting, then you would try to, you think that you taken care of all the cases, but many a times there will be unanticipated and unintended interactions between the systems. Uh, you, so, the systems engineer might have developed test cases for validating things, but at a one particular point where a specific combination of temperature, pressure and uh, other aspects came in or a, a condensation came in or a moisture level came in, the batteries behaved weirdly. So, one of the major reason at this point or the reason for this failure was that the interactions uh, or, or the interconnecting, the interconnection between the battery and the complex, the system, the power management system of Dreamliner was causing the problem. And same system, same behavior kept, was also found in uh, another example would be Samsung Galaxy Note 7, where the battery busting was another issue. So, anyway, uh, Boeing got into their act together and got the uh, you know systems engineers to come up with an alternate design of interface, come up with better choices of batteries and then the faulty situation where, where was rectified. Once the rectification happened, testing continued, then certification again was done and then the fleets were back into normal. So, this is a particular situation where the systems engineering was called in again to uh, assess the, uh, assess the uh, fielding of the fleet or the operation of the Dreamliner 787 during its what you call as the deployment phase or when it is actually fielded. So, uh, it, the takeaway from this example is that uh, it is not just the, uh, so you can think about this way, systems engineering is obviously needed during development phases, the two development phases 
the concept phase on the engineering concept and engineering phases but it is also necessary during the post development phase or the deployment phase of the system so that is also an important takeaway uh, of the, the exam of this uh, lecture or, or of this example is that uh, any system any complex system when you engineer you will it will be almost impossible to develop test cases to test and validate every aspects of the system and uh, given the fact that Boeing designed Dreamliner 787 and there was only one major uh, issue with the battery. Um, and one minor issue about the door or the issues with the hinges of the door. Other than that, having just two issues that need to be sorted out in the design and development of such a complex system shows the importance or the significance of going through a good sound systems engineering approach. So, we will look into the uh, further details of the systems, uh, the concept development phase. Uh, which is uh, model is proposed by Kosaikov et al. Uh, and there are they have specified different aspects of it, which also gives you a very good overview of what are the inputs and outputs of each of the processes of the system. So, the, um, the, the first phase, which is a concept development phase, as we said earlier, has three important steps in it. The need analysis, which is the first step. Second step is the concept exploration. And third one is the definition. So, the need analysis has typically two inputs. The first input comes from the operational deficiencies, that is the first aspect. The second aspect comes from the technological opportunities. So, the two inputs, the technological advancements give you a new option. So, as I said earlier, how nuclear submarines uh, arrived because it is a uh, technological advancements in miniaturizing the nuclear reactors uh, suggested the, rec the feasibility of developing a nuclear submarine. Similarly, also the operational deficiencies, uh, like an example of that would be uh, India looking for uh, uh, medium range fighters because uh, of the de de depleting field, sorry, depleting fleet conditions of the Air Force has forced. Uh, India to actually look for uh, stop by arrangements. So, that is an operational deficiency. So, sometimes operational deficiency, sometimes a technological advantage advancements, sometimes both of them put together creates a need or establish a. So, both of these here you are talking about the need is a valid need okay, for the customer. So, once that comes in, then uh, from there multiple things happens within this. So, what are the major multiple things happen within this? The first one will be the uh, system studies. So, multiple studies will be undertaken to study what are the possible system. Then the second one will be the technology assignment assessments, not assignment assessments. So, here the readiness, technological readiness is being assessed whether the technology is available or is the new technology need to be developed. All those aspects comes out here and then the third aspect will be operational analysis. So, here is it feasible to own and operate for the customer. So, those aspects basically gets designed here. So, as I said earlier, these are all analysis. Uh, the concept phase is mostly dealing with analysis aspect of the system. From here, we get two outputs. The first output, we can call it as system operational uh, effectiveness and the second aspect will be the system capabilities. So, the output of the need analysis will be system operating operational effectiveness and system capabilities as the authors calls it and which will become the input to the next phase which is the concept exploration. 
So, the concept exploration has multiple aspects in, in, as part of this. The first aspect would be uh, the requirement analysis. Here the specifics are built and second aspect would be the feasibility tests. So, the uh, and we are here we are actually looking at multiple uh, op options. So, here is it is also in another way to think about it is alternative uh, search. So, what are the other alternatives available to the system or for to fulfilling the need? What are the possible options out of it? And we have two outputs out of this. The first output is called as the system performance requirements. What are the performance requirements? So, not just the uh, so specific performance requirements. So, like for example, in the case of Dreamliner what we talked about one of the performance requirement will be 50 percent of the aircraft will be built using composite resulting in a weight reduction resulting in a 20 percent less structural weight uh, or it could be like uh, because of the less structural weight uh, the thrust requirement is reduced by 10 percent. Uh, resulting in a fuel incre fuel efficiency increase of 3 percent. So, something like that the specific performance requirements will get actually crystallized as part of this and then the second as aspect will be system concepts. Multiple system concepts gets derived as part of this. So, so here you are exploring the exploration is the big word here. Once the exploration happens and the performance requirements comes out which becomes the input to the third phase which is the concept definition and the Concept definition is where basically two aspects happen selection from alternatives or you can think about it as trade off studies. How are you doing different trade offs among different alternatives? The positives and negatives of all al possible alternative system configurations are evaluated so that an appropriate system can be chosen out of that. Then the second aspect of this will be the architecture. I'm not talking about the it is called as a system architecture. Please remember that this is not not engineering architecture. Not is a keyword not engineering architecture. But here in one of the earliest presentations I have mentioned that it is mostly related to the uh, block diagrams and interconnectivity and those kind of aspects not just specifically choosing what will be the specific component that will go into it. Sometimes some component information is available but not necessarily because lot of the component choices and other things will be the job of the experts not the job of the systems engineer at this phase. So, out from here we get two outputs, two major outputs comes out of this and the two major outputs uh, of the system are uh, system functional specs, specifications and system concept definition. So, here you can think about it as a chosen system. So, one single system is chosen here and then the functional specifications of the chosen system and as well as the concept of the chosen system gets uh, specified as part of the output of the stage. So, uh, com, com, summing up again the, uh, the, the three phases has the analysis of the needs uh, where the valid need validity of the need of the customer is established here and from there the capabilities the required capabilities of the system and the operational effectivenesses are established which goes into exploration where multiple systems are uh, multiple alternatives are explored where uh, aspects are listed out from where the system performance requirements and the concepts both of them come out as output of it which gets us the input into the third stage where the appropriate choice of the uh, system is done or a sp specific system is chosen from there and then the functional specifications of the chosen design and the concept definition are both as part of uh, comes out as the output of this 
uh, concept development phase. Also, um, we should understand the fact that when we talk about need analysis initially, what do we do there? So, need to remember these two important questions. Is there a valid need for a new system? This question is the first and foremost most important aspect that becomes a part of the need analysis. The second important question is the um, is there exist a practical approach to satisfy uh, the user need, user need for a new system. So, the two important aspects that gets covered in the need analysis is, is there a validity of the need for a new system, does the customer require a new system and is there a practical approach available to satisfy the user need for a new system, is it feasible, can it be made, can it be built. So, in a way the output of this is the first iteration of the system itself. itself, uh, which obviously will be a very basic concept model, nonetheless it is the first or preliminary design. So, that is what the importance of the need analysis that comes out. Then we also talked about concept exploration where these things need to be kept in mind. In concept exploration again there are two questions that are important. Uh, the major question is what are the performance requirements, performance requirements of the new system of the new system so that user needs can be satisfied. That is the first question. The second question is, is there at least one feasible approach? approach to achieve the desired performance, desired performance, performance at affordable cost or at affordable price. So, the two aspects you are looking at what are the possible options, uh, what are the performance requirements of the new system, so that the user needs can be fulfilled and what are the feasible approaches to achieve that desired performance at an affordable price. So, that will be the aspect of the concept exploration and the some of the tools that are used in concept exploration. So, the concept explore tools involve various process methods, decision support systems, expert analysis, also Delphi method etcetera are all part of this. So, multiple tools are used, so that uh, different feasible approaches can be thought through, so you are exploring the concepts. Then comes the definition, the concept definition, the third aspect and here the major question, the single question that gets answered here is what are the key characteristics? characteristics of a system or of the system concept that can provide the best balance. We earlier told about the, the systems engineering is a balancing act, the best balance 
between capability capability of the system capability life of the system and cost of the system so this is the major question that gets answered so the functional specs okay so here in this regard is uh, the as we said earlier the output of this whole process will be the functional specs or specifications which means it is a description of of what the system must do and how well is the aspect. So, the functional specs basically provide at the end of this whole exercise what the system must do and how well is specified as part of this and obviously S plus system definition itself system concept definition also is an output of this stage. Thank you.